Welcome back everybody to Cradle to Grave R. My name is Mark Gingrass. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to split a data set up into a training set and a test set randomly. We're gonna build models off of that. We're gonna test the models using predictions. We're gonna create um, all of this using the tidyverse and the caret package, and we'll use the MT cars data set. So let's jump right in and I'll give you some nuances of, of why um, some of these things are important to know. So let's just jump in because that's the best way to do it. So let's load some libraries here. Tidyverse is the first library so we can use um, all the functions of like um, the, the using the tidy method. If you don't have it, obviously click on install down here and just type in tidyverse and then install. Same thing with the caret package. We're gonna load that up. So library caret c-a-r-e-t you're going to see this package in multiple languages besides r uh, I, I first learned about caret package in python when i was studying that so load the caret package again if you don't have it install it real quick and first we're going to do is load the data so we'll we'll create a load the data section and we'll simply just um, call it my data as always and run MT cars. Now this is a very small data set, 32 observations with 11 variables. Um, typically when you run any of these models with small data sets, you're, you're not gonna get really good results. So please explore this later with larger data sets. Find a larger data set, switch out the um, MT cars with something different and of course your parameter of interest, your predicted parameters that you want to uh, make a prediction on, switch those out as well. So first let's do something called inspect the data. So we'll inspect data first. And what we'll use is part of the deplier or the tidyverse is a sample n. So we'll do sample underscore n. So it's just saying, hey, give me a random sample of this data. And how many do I want? Let's say I want four. Command enter on that or control enter. And you'll see down at the bottom, I have randomly four rows. Now that's what the beauty of sample n is. It just gives you a random number uh, to uh, to inspect, because you don't want to inspect the first three or the last three or the middle three. You want random ones because you know maybe these numbers are outrageous, right? So now we have the miles per gallon, we have the displacement, et cetera, et cetera. We have all these different things. All right, that being said, we've sampled it. Cool, it looks good. You should also view your data. You should also do a scatter plot based on the features that you're looking at, et cetera, et cetera. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is split the data. So split data into training, and test set, right? Now to do that, we're gonna set a seed. So set.seed will help us reproduce this random assignment, right? So, and I'll show you how this is gonna make a difference later on in just a few minutes. So setting the seed tells the computer, hey, um, I want random numbers, but I wanna be able to reproduce these numbers randomly so that I can troubleshoot it, right? You can't troubleshoot something if you can never get the same thing twice. So we'll get the same random numbers twice if we continue to use set.seed123. And I randomly picked 123 completely out of my head. So we'll let's just create a uh, training.samples. We're gonna create the samples using MT cars uh, miles per gallon. Uh, we can do this multiple ways, but we'll do just miles per gallon like this. Command or control shift M will give you the pipe operator. So I'm gonna pipe the miles per gallon into a a function called create data partition. Now that's part of the, uh, if you, if, let me erase that real quick. If I start typing in create data partition, you can see in brackets or the curly braces, the caret package. So that's how you can understand like where it's coming from. So from the caret package, I'm using create data partition. It makes things a lot easier when you can use packages uh, sometimes, but it does kind of abstract you away a little bit from what's going on. So you still have to be careful and understand what's going on. But I think create data partition with a with a partition equal to, and you can say 0.8 or whatever number you want, list equals false. I don't want it to return a list, I want it to return a vector. So if I do command enter on that, what it does is it just creates, as you can see on the right hand side, if I jump below instead, on the right hand side you see train in, and it's one through 28, uh, and it's got all the numbers. If I click on it, you can see all the numbers here. Now, because there's only, what, 32 observations, I mean, that leaves us only four, four observations in our test set. So it's a terrible example for the data set. But this will get you an idea of how to do this, right? So we split it randomly. Now again, if I go back to this training, one, two, three, it doesn't, you'll see it skips some. Uh, let's see, 31, 30, 29, 28, there's no 27 here, there's no 27. So it randomly took it, right? But it'll randomly do that the same way because I set my seed to one, two, three. 
If I set the seed to a different number, you'll get a different random set, right? Now you'll really notice it with larger data sets, but let's continue on. And now let's create the uh, model. So let's build model here. And we'll just say, hey, the model is going to be a linear model. And we're gonna look for miles per gallon, as we always do, seems to be. Uh, tilde dot, it's just a notation that says, hey, based on all the features, so, uh, at, what do you expect miles per gallon to be based on all of these features, right? I'm gonna bring in the data is equal to uh, the train, the train dot data. Uh, I didn't actually set up my, let's, let's break this. I created a random train in samples, but I didn't actually create the data sets. So let's do that first. So let's do train dot data is equal to, and then now we can just subset it. You know, my, my data subsetted by training dot samples because we just created that, uh, comma, all features, right? So all the rows that training samples was, which remember it didn't have the 27th row, so it's not gonna include that, and all the columns. So train data is now set, and then we'll do test.data. And then to simply subset the rest, you do this. You do a negative training dot sample. So anything, any row, except for the ones that are in training.sample, please pull back and pre create this test.data, right? And I want all of the all of the columns. So it's just basically the complement of what train data is. Now we can go build the model based on the training data. So train.data, so now I have that to use. Okay, data equals train.data, and that's our linear model. Command enter, the model is now set. All right, make predictions and let's let's test this bad boy out. So we're gonna so we built the model. Now we're gonna predict using the model. I should be using that spin notation, but I haven't memorized it enough to do it on the fly. But the spin, remember, spin in a previous tutorial is where you can create our markdowns using our scripts. We like to practice what we preach, right? <laughs> so uh, predictions, we're gonna say. Uh, predictions, I'm gonna say is the model piped into a predict function and I bring in my test data. So remember, predict function we've used before, the predict function, you bring in your test data, right? And you also bring in the model. Remember, now this is Deplier, we're using some tidyverse, the tidy way to do things. Remember, when I pipe something in, we're using that pipe operator right here, it's actually just taking the place of if I just used, if I just said predict, and then I would have to bring in model, then my test data, right? So all that pipe does is say, hey, I'm gonna take this model, pipe it into some predict function, but really it's saying, hey, in the predict function, you take in a model, and I'm just gonna go ahead and um, not include it here because it's, it's automatically assumed based on the pipe operator. So these are equivalent, these two lines, 25 and 26 right now. But I'm gonna, of course I didn't set it equal to predictions, but that's what's going on. So it's just a little bit different notation. In fact, there's an error, uh, test.data not found, did I not? Samples, samples. See, if without you guys, I would be lost. <laughs> did that not work as well? T-R-A-I-N-I-N-G, wow. Okay, it's morning time. Coffee it is. Predictions. Now it worked, now my predictions worked. I have a set of predictions. And again though, all I have here, if I click on it, well you can't even click on it because it's just numbers, but I could type down here and type in predictions and it'll give me the numbers, but it's not it's not that clean. Well, again, I said there's only four because there's 28 training and four tests. So the four is right here. This is what it predicts. It predicts this um, Cadillac Fleetwood to be 13, Dodge Challenger 17, right? So how good did we do? I don't know. Right, so let's continue on and do some uh, some other things. Let's do a compare. This is what I like to do. I like to say, hey, compare, and I'll create a data frame. I'll say, hey, data dot frame, and then my actual numbers is equal to the test data um, miles per gallon. Right? I'm only pulling out miles per. I don't want to compare features because the features are going to be the same except for miles per gallon. Right. So miles per gallon, that's what I'm gonna have my actual comma, then I'll say predicted equals the actual predictions that I just created. Remember, I just created predictions right here in line 25. So I'm gonna do command enter on that. Now we can look at compare the data frame and say, okay, this is the actual and this is the predicted. 
And so you can see how much you're off. My actual was 10.4, I predicted 13. My actual for Dodge Challenger was 15.5, but I predicted 17. So I'm off by all of them. But look at this Porsche 914-2. Actual 26, and then the predicted 26.51. Volvo, 21.4, 20. See, you could see some of the some of the differences, and I just wanted to show you that. Now, one way to do this, remember, you have to go back to statistics and understand what root mean squared error equals. Um, you know, in a nutshell, it's just basically the the average difference between the actual and the predicted throughout all of the uh, the data. But go back and look up RMSE. In fact, we're going to use an RMSE function here. We're going to say uh, we'll just call this error. Error collection, right? This is our error collection. So far, we only have one though. And we're going to say RMSE, which is from, uh, I believe, the caret. Yeah, the caret. And we'll do predictions and test out data miles per gallon. So, what this is doing is saying, hey, take the root mean squared error using the predicted values, comparing them to the tested. You know, it's basically we're doing similar something similar here, except for this RMSE is a function that, re, that, re, that can return us the actual RMSE without doing the calculations, right? So, our error is 2.56, right? So, just remember that. In fact, let's write that down. Let's say, let's, let's do error one equals 2.56. Okay, so what I want to show you, what's really important here, is I'm gonna rerun the whole thing. We do Control A. In fact, just to show you, I'm gonna cl clear out with this broom, this little sweep thing. Delete everything. Delete everything. I don't want anything, right? I'm gonna do Control A, Control Command, or Control Enter, and you'll see that my error is 4.808. I I played around with it a little bit, so let's do this one more time. <laughs> uh, command Control Enter, and it should be the same. 4.808. No matter how many times you run that, it should be 4.808. Now, because I've, I've made mistakes and I went back and, and I've, I've made, modified things, I think that's why I had the first error, uh, something different. So that being said, what I want to show you is that when I change the seed, so remember 4.808, so let's actually create that correctly here down here, 4.808. Now, if I run it again with a different seed, say 100, Control A, Control Enter, you will see that I have 3.803. You can see it over here, right here, 3.803. Right, if I run it again, three point, it doesn't change, right? Now if I change this to a, a 10 or whatever number, Control A, Control Enter, 5.08, right? So what's going on? What's going on here is that every time that I change the seed, every time I change the seed, uh, it's a different set of random numbers one through 32 because we're trying to split that training set of 32 so because it's pulling in different training data and the models are built on that you're going to get different error rates now you want to find the lowest error rate so i hope you understand what's going on there every time i'm getting a different set of training data and that's the value of cross validation and pulling in random data um, if you just did the first 28 and left the last three you could run into trouble because maybe they're sorted somehow and that's not going to give you good results either, right? So that's the idea behind it. So what I want you to do for your homework is to create some sort of loop that'll do maybe, I don't know, 100 different set seed numbers and compare the RMSEs. Somehow track the RMSEs in a loop and then find the smallest RMSE and that's the model that you probably want to use based on the test data. Again though, this is a very, very tiny, tiny data set. So your values are not gonna make it much sense, honestly. So if you can find a data set that's got maybe 10,000 or 20,000 rows, that's the one you wanna play with, so.